Kunin Show is your gateway to the unknown, I've curated five shocking videos that expose the darker side of our world. Hit subscribe and join me on this journey into the realms of fear. Number five, a strange sight, a big bird in the distance? No doubt, not a regular bird just now. A creature with long wings spotted climbing a cathedral dome in Mexico. The demon-like creature glances back, spots it's on camera but doesn't mind, flies up, spreads wings, then takes off. This video's viral in the community, so I'll analyze. Some say it's a bat, others claim a demon near the cathedral, but let's clear it up. It's from CGI artist Fernando Logau. If you spot it elsewhere online, now you know the real story. Number four. For two and a half years ago, we moved into an old farmhouse, and since then, peculiar occurrences have become a regular part of our lives. The epicenter of these strange happenings is undoubtedly the blue dining rooms. While musical instruments in the house often played by themselves over the years, recently, our attention has been captivated by the piano. Curious about its behavior, we decided to set up a camera to capture any unusual activity. The initial part of the recording is admittedly slow, lasting several minutes, which might test the patience of some viewers. However, amidst the seemingly mundane moments, there are noteworthy occurrences. A mysterious light appears on the wall, defying explanation. It's not a laser pointer, and intriguingly, it never recurs. As the clock strikes 2, 19 a.m., an unexpected event unfolds. The piano lid mysteriously pops open. No visible strings or obvious means can account for this action. Perhaps you can find an explanation. While delving into the farmhouse's history, we discover that it was once inhabited by a lone old woman. Legend has it that she passed away at exactly 2.19 in the morning. Noted for her musical prowess, this time is also significant because it's when the Spencer piano, located in the same room, seemingly plays by itself. At first, my assumption led me to believe that Annie or her boyfriend must be seated off to the side, manipulating the piano. However, a surprising twist unfolds in the next part of the recording, challenging my initial interpretation. Unexpectedly, something peculiar occurs, challenging any logical explanation. Initially, I consider worn-out piano wires as a cause for the spontaneous note a common phenomenon. However, this theory loses credibility as no such incidents occurred in the preceding full minutes. Adding to the enigma, a tray and clock move simultaneously. While one could argue that someone off-camera manipulated the tray, the clock's mysterious opening remains unexpected. I'm seeking clarification. Could this piano be one of those antique models designed to play autonomously? If not, I'm genuinely perplexed as I can't fathom how such occurrences are feasible. Even if the piano has the capability to play on its own. So, the idea of the piano playing by itself seems plausible, but the notion of it shutting on its own is beyond belief. While Annie might have forcefully closed the lid off camera, the subsequent reflection and what appears to be someone sitting down perplex me. At this point, I'm compelled to admit that I've exhausted rational explanations. It seems increasingly likely that paranormal forces are at play. Whether someone is off camera or not, the impossibility of playing a piano with the lid closed boggles my mind. This farmhouse is likely haunted by someone who refuses to acknowledge their departure. Number three. In the quiet town of South Jersey, a man named Nick mysteriously vanished, leaving his community in shock. Shortly thereafter, his older brother Mark also disappeared compounding the town's distress with consecutive and unexplained events. The absence of evidence left the police helpless in their investigation. Several months later, a mysterious package arrived at the doorstep of one of Nick's high school acquaintances. Inside were memory cards and hard drives containing a trove of videos. Or strangely, the return address pointed to Nick's house, raising questions about whether Nick himself sent it or if someone else did on his behalf posthumously amidst the typical teenage vlogging content, such as making sandwiches or watching TV. There were videos that contained chilling details related to Nick's whereabouts, or rather unsettlingly, his potential remains. Or to unravel this mystery, let's retrace Nick's steps. In September, Nick ventured to the infamous and haunted Pleasant Mill Cemetery in Batstow, Jersey. Crossing an old bridge into the woods, 
he encountered burial markers and an eerie old church. Something about this place deeply unsettled him, especially as he stood on the bridge where voices were rumored to echo over the water. What he perceived during that moment haunted him the most. Nick, unable to initially perceive anything strange, contemplates the possibility that an unseen presence eluded the camera. The video concludes with him running back to his car, visibly serious and frightened, indicating a genuine encounter with the unknown. Haunted by the experience, Nick vows never to return, but the persistent curiosity leads him back a week later, accompanied by his friend Austin. Night has fallen as they arrive, finding little activity by the old church. Unfazed, they stroll to the river, unbothered by the silence, challenging each other. They decide to sit in the darkness under the same bridge where Nick first encountered the mysterious presence. As their lights extinguish, an eerie contact is made, marking a chilling turn of events. You hear that? When they turn their lights on to see what's out there, They behold a grotesque face, reminiscent of a broad gob, staring back at them. A sudden splash follows, as if something leaps or emerges from the depths below. In a rush, they flee, uncertain about the nature of this entity. Disturbing its dwelling twice, it retaliates. What unfolds on this ominous night is a chilling event. Nick, noticing movement behind a curtain wall, believes it's his older brother, Mark. The sight of hands is perplexing as no one is present. A sudden drop in temperature adds to the eerie atmosphere, contrasting with the normal outdoor conditions during Mark's search. Oh. <laughs> they should have refrained from returning, but in September, they dared once more. This time, lured by mysterious lights in the woods, they stumble upon an unintended discovery. An unmarked book with its peculiar binding hints at a protective ritual or perhaps a curse on those who open it without permission. Intrigued, Nick seizes the book and they retreat for sustenance. Unbeknownst to them, their actions trigger an ominous pursuit. Now, Nick and Austin, driven by an unhealthy obsession, find themselves ensnared in the eerie allure of Pleasant Mill Cemetery. It both terrifies and beckons them, compelling their relentless return. entity craves its book back, its presence growing stronger with each visit to Pleasant Mill Cemetery. What? Tired of this. Wait. What the? As they examine the picture, minutes ticking away before it plummets, I discern it to be an image of Mark, the elder brother who vanished in September. Ersnick and Austin stumble upon a significant revelation near the cemetery, an old house seemingly ravaged by fire, revealing a hidden chamber through a floor's square hole. Uneasy, they resist descending, sensing an ominous aura. However, Austin, making a simple observation, notices a distinctive smell. Recognizing the urgency, he insists they abandon the place, highlighting the gravity of the situation. Oh, it smells. All right, we're wasting time. We gotta go. First, a stench could be mold, or perhaps a long undisturbed body. After the unsettling discovery, things take a dark turn. By November, Mark has vanished, leaving no trace. Determined, Nick returns to the cemetery in search of his brother, only to uncover a chilling revelation in the final recording. A, a towering figure, its pallid face dark against the shadows, advances with a menacing tool in hand. I regret to inform you that it appears Nick has tragically encountered the same destiny as his brother. Number two, this video, uploaded in October by a YouTuber named McClellum, has gained widespread attention on various countdown channels. Despite its popularity, McClellum hasn't received proper credit for his exceptional skills as a special effects artist. Many of these channels insist that the video is authentic, but in reality, McClellum created a 3D model using a rubber duck, showcasing his remarkable talent. 
Only when lightning strikes at minutes and seconds can you faintly discern the rubber duck shape against the sky. Beyond that moment, there's little to suggest it's fake, except for the title that labels it a Cthulhu rubber duck. McClellan's choice of a rubber duck serves to illustrate that even toys can become terrifying through special effects. If you come across a countdown channel claiming this video is genuine, be aware that the information is inaccurate. This acknowledgement is a simple effort to give credit where it's due. Number 1. Versus Whiprafter. The troubling video I'm sharing was uploaded in March 2017 by someone struggling on the brink of self-destruction for years. The situation worsened over time, feeling like something is relentlessly pursuing them. I, I don't know what else to say, except goodbye. You won't believe his next actions, but first, let me share his story. His mental struggle began about two years before he said his final goodbye. That's when someone started knocking on his door almost every night. He was living alone and incredibly private. He never revealed his name. Having a visitor was unusual for him, especially in the middle of the night. At first, the knocks were bothersome, but he hoped ignoring them would make them stop. When that failed, he started documenting everything early on, just in case he needed evidence for the police later. He also decided to confront and defend himself if necessary. The incident in February began with two soft knocks that could easily be dismissed as imagination. But after three weeks of trouble, he's jumpy, catching every sound. Ready to face the problem head on, he acts forcefully. But there's a big issue. Nothing is ever there to confront. Listen closely to this part, because I hear chatter after he locks up. He sets up another camera outside the next night, on exactly that Friday in February. True to form, it begins anew. He, he opens the door, but no one's there. It's not two separate videos. His actions align perfectly in both, like when he smooths his hair at a specific minute and second. Even with practice, it couldn't be this precise. Also, this happens at an unusual hour, when anyone would want to move, but he couldn't due to financial constraints. Unable to endure it anymore, he decides to go outside before dawn, attempting to capture whatever is responsible on video. Although he doesn't spot them, he discovers footprints leading to the woods, resembling a hoof with two legs instead of four. Some suggest it might be a demon or something encrypted, but I can't confirm that. What I do know is he genuinely went out at that time, as the sound of a train persists throughout the video. Strangely, a late night train interferes with all his videos, suggesting a close connection. Something unfortunate may have occurred on the nearby tracks. August, whatever left those footprints sought alternative ways inside, both day and night. It was no longer confined to a single time frame. Please tell me if this is an animal or something much worse. I didn't hear any claws tapping. This was the sound of something swift. Raccoons or possums do this at night. But this was big in broad daylight, like a restless spirit. For years of such encounters, maybe you'll grasp why. After saying goodbye in March, we opted to leave the door open and end the farewell. Whatever it was, it sounded far from human. Over two years later, this enigmatic final video was uploaded in January. <laughs> sound like church bells. Perhaps this clip is from a funeral. Could it be his? And the person typing these replies doesn't behave like him at all. 